Church and three places posted and on the website yes. and emailed to interested parties so we can um, move forward with this. And welcome everybody for the preview of um, town meeting next week. And does anyone have any um, questions, comments, suggestions? Well, then I guess. Um, um, oh, how are you doing? I was expecting a couple of the trustees that had something to say, but um, I believe they were under the impression it was 615. That's the regular select board meeting, the, the pre town meetings at 6. So well, we were going by the back of this. It's at 615. It does. It does. All right. Yeah, she was warned at 6 in the paper, so that's why yeah. I put it. And it's warned around town at 6 o'clock, too. Anyway. Well, let's um, just explain your delay. Talk next year. slow. Let's change that to 6 o'clock. All right. Um, so, do you know what they wanted to talk about? Um, I would hate to put words in their mouth, All but right. um, I think about the library budget not being included with the rest of the town budget. Um, it was explained somewhat in your select board letter in the town report. Right. However, it kind of reads like the library is a uh, separate organization as opposed to a department of the town. Uh, well, and it's, um, that's, uh, it, to a certain extent it is slightly a separate organization. In fact, in that it's run and directed by the trustees, so that's why it'd be handy, I guess, to have the trustees here to right. maybe okay. that's that. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, do your, you do your own budget. We have no control over your budget, therefore it's outside of our realm of control. It's just been, so, I mean, this is just a diversion from 50 years. It's been part of the town budget since 1969. Mm -hmm. But um, We're always striving to improve and be clearer, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, I just see when, you know, pulling it out with Werba was sort of six not well what what directed that was the size of the of the chunks of the budget it seemed like they were big enough pieces of change that it was worth having a separate um, focus on that and said so whereas most of the other appropriations are just you know, and we just had more. had some uh, concern about the differences in the way calculations were made. Um, Which calculations? Yeah. Well, in, in your letter, it mentioned a 12.3 percent request increase in our request. Mm -hmm. Actually, our budget appropriation request this year was actually a little bit less than last year. It may be 12 percent more than what was appropriated last year but it was our budget request this year was actually a little bit less I think it has to do with um, uh, the budget ending June 30th and that's probably where the 12 percent came from what what was actually spent June 30th I'm not I don't have it in front of me so but I think that could have been it spent versus budget Anyway, just we we felt that it would be easier to talk about it and for people to think about it if it was a standalone entity and not piled in with everything else. And being as it's you know forty thousand, know, forty thousand plus dollars, that it was a big enough chunk that it was worthwhile speaking about. I mean, it's, it's extremely difficult to discuss the library budget considering the way it goes up and down year by year with um, what's appropriated, what's not appropriated, what's budgeted, what's not budgeted. It's, it's like difficult to compare it, yeah. year to year. So that's actually a perfect uh, reason why maybe it should be separated so that um, it, do it doesn't... Uh, take our the, the regular budget numbers and inflate them up and down and up and down we're, we're looking for a cons 
consistent number. And if, if well, it and does fluctuate, then there, that's almost a, a good reason to have it set beside the budget. And, and I believe that the library would love to have a consistent number <laughs> <laughs> so that we can adequately budget. Mm -hmm. Also, in previous town meetings, um, there have been numbers of people who have questioned keeping those large appropriations within the appropriation line, article line, and there, there were requests to take those large items out and vote on them separately. Yeah. And I think that that's listed in the town report in last year's um, town meeting minutes, too. Right, and I think those were, were the outside organizations that are lumped together. Uh, no, it was specifically Warville last year. Right, right. Which, are, which is a separate 501c3 or whatever organizations, not the municipal library. That it would be strange to include that with separate organizations. Well, again, it's the... I, in the past, didn't people vote on every line in the, in the budget? And that was allowed, so it's, it's, um, it's not, it's hey, not a, an attack. Yeah, you know. David, you have a question? Uh, in the past, uh, when we approved the amount to be raised by taxes, it included the library budget. Right. This, and this year it won't. This, way, this year it will not. So that's a difference. So it seems like extra money to the library trustee. It seems like they're being singled out as the kind of money that can be axed from the budget. In the same way that if you decided not to fund, uh, oh, I don't know, safe house or something, because they haven't done a good job, uh, it's not that we ever have. But you understand? You understand? You understand where the, the library trustees are coming from? Yeah. It's a matter of interpretation. Um, so putting putting it in its own entity um, does give it its own identity, so that the taxpayers can look at the library. Do the select does the select board uh, come up with a second number to be raised by taxes, which would include a vote yes on all of the extra? Appropriations that have been requested. During the budget process, we we do that. Yes. Do you um, do you, is it presented at the town meeting? If we vote all of these extra the things, uh, the ambulance the and uh, and uh, the various organizations and the library, that that the, 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 the number to be raised by taxes will be it's this a, other number. It's already in the book. It's in the ready in the book. It's page thirty six. Okay. So, and, and that figure is uh, provided all of the appropriations are approved. So that would be generally worst case scenario. Um, of course, the appropriations. Worst or best, depending on who you are. Yeah, the, the right. appropriations can be voted, it can, can go higher, higher or lower. Right. Or lower. Discussion. Or lower, right. Yeah. Or lower. So it have gone higher? Yeah, yeah. I think that uh, in a couple years ago, the. Um, council on aging was increased by 500 bucks from 2,500 to mm -hmm. 3,000. Right? And, you know, it's um, right. kind of people feel that there's something they care about and they want to increase it. That's um, you can from the floor, and that's one thing. It it allows a um, something to be voted on when it's, it's, it's isolated versus like a whole budget. And okay. there is one more question, Jen. No, shut up. No, that's why you're are here. Are there any? Are there any of the funds uh, that are under uh, possibly the control of the uh, trustees for public funds, or some other, or maybe the library trustees funds that were donated to the library, not to be s just spent, but to be either invested or allowed to grow as an endowment, so to speak. There are both from the town and the trustees of public funds, and I believe the library also has. The library funds. also has a fund. And, and also the cemetery has some 
funds that have been donated to that, where you the, um, the proceeds from the interest can be can be applied. Now that's part of what made this such a challenging budget year this year is that the the trustees of public funds were not able to contribute anything to the budget, whereas in past years they have been able to to you know um, dozens of thousands of dollars in significant amounts, and then this year in the way that it's working. That was a zero. Did and they so. did they explain to you why they could give zero this year when they did tens of thousands last year? Just Nancy uh, response. It's in the town report. Yeah, yeah, it's in the town, town report that report. it's in the town report that you're not getting the kind of interest. It's in it. the trustees and of so public funds have a have a yes, but you went from in here. seventy thousand to zero. That's right. Well, why didn't you go from seventy thousand to four thousand? I'm not a trustee of public funds. But I, it was basically reported to us that the the fluctuations in the market and uh, under the uh, leadership of our <laughs> federal government that um, everything's better now, but the small people don't get any money. But but to yeah. but to have it zeroed out. I, I in the past, yeah. my my impression was that they gave the town some of the increase in the value of the investments right and not I, more not more than they had earned in that year usually right but 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 maybe almost all that they allowed their funds to grow on a regular basis now I are we to understand that they lost money this year I think that when they got together and I'm not I'm I speaking myself I, I, I'm I, speaking for the trustees but you you make I think that when to explain it I think that when they put their report together, when they met with the management of People's United Bank, they felt that it was not prudent with our funds to distribute anything this year. They're, they're, they operate under the trust agreements that the donors, am I saying it correctly? Yes, the, you are. Donors. Hey, just in time. There's a question oh, for you. here she is. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Not so fast. <laughs> I'm reading your report oh, in the town report, <laughs> and there's no, a question. So Barbara, did the did the did the, the funds under your care did they grow at all this year? Uh, here. I have Take to check. Off, You're sir. talking about here. Yeah, they just, read. The, the report is. The, well, you got her off guard here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, based on the um, on the June thirtieth statement as of two thousand eighteen, they did grow. Just barely. Yes, yeah, barely. They, they did grow. Yeah. They did grow a little. Yeah, but we have also gave out money. But but none of that money is going to be given to the town because it's so, so small. Well, basically, you're trying to keep a a um, conservative amount of principal in the funds that we have money to continue to go forward. Right. So you don't maybe make one money this year, but you don't want to spend it all this year because you may not make any money next year. Let me ask you a different question. Do we ever? Do you ever distribute funds to the town in excess of the money earned in that year? Oh yeah. You do sometimes. But so, so, so the fact that you it's possibly on only broke even wouldn't necessarily mean that you wouldn't give the town. Not necessarily, because you're doing, you can look at that three years or five years and kind of take it. Okay, let me ask you just one more question. Am I under oath? <laughs> That's just joking. Can she get her coat off? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I'll wait till you get your coat off. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Do you need the... Uh, I, I don't think so. He's going to see as much as I can. <laughs> While she's taking the coat off. Broadly based, such things are under what's known as a spending rule. The endowers yeah. set a way that the money can be spent. Yeah. So if they're not making a substantial amount, the endowers rules may say you don't disperse in a given year. Yeah. So you really have to go back to the endowments themselves. Thank you. Correct? Yes. So you're, say, you're, saying, you're saying that the trustees were, were forced not to. They're bound by the endowers. They were bound in a situation that they couldn't give the town any money. Yes. Well, they well, several yeah. times. <laughs> but you, but, but, <coughs> but she's already explained that there are years in which the trustees give the town more money than they earned that year. That would seem to reduce the endowment. 
But you're not doing it that one single year. I think that's what the point is, is you're doing over a three to five year average. Okay, so one more question. My, so my last question is. You want to let her finish her explanation? <laughs> sure. Yeah. So that in some cases, you may not have make money in that particular year, but the other two or three years you might have. And as long as the principle, what our theory is, our, our philosophy and goal is to maintain the principle of those endowments in addition to the cost of living adjustment of those endowments. So basically, that's your guiding principle, and then what you distribute is based on that guidance. So you're never invading your principle, and you're never invading your principle if there's, a, let's say, there's 3% cost of living, you're not going to give any money out, even though you might have made 3%. That, so your analysis this year was that you were in the red on that on that basis. No, then, then we no, we said we were not in the red. We just said we didn't have sufficient funds that would reward making any kind of distributions in particular years. That particular year, we made last year significant contributions. Okay, this particular year coming up for the town purposes, we did not make a contribution. What was the last year that you did made no contribution to the town? I don't really know. Not, probably not. Probably not in my term that I can recall. There have been years before that. Anyway, we've had varying, varying, varying amounts. But zero. Okay. Off the top of my head, I don't remember any of zeros in the last five years. Let's say whether it goes back further than that, or just have to look at the records. I think overall we've been fairly consistent with generous. Um, donations, or not donations, but generous return of the money to the town. Yes, but the endowment has grown. Because of the fact that we don't distribute money when it isn't growing, and we don't delve into the principle in order to make a distribution. Had we delved into the principle and not followed our rules, the endowment may not have grown at all. There was times before we were more actively engaged in managing the funds and by the trustees in the town, that there was hardly anything for principal growth because of the way the investments were going, if you have a 2% interest rate or something like that, you've had no distributions. And for many years, I don't believe before, uh, say, when, when we got more active in this, there were not very many distributions. It was barely anything going anywhere because the income was so low. <coughs> you, can't, you can't tell me when the last time that happened. I can't. Okay, thank you. Go back to the town report. Yeah, you can find it. So that, that definitely added to the challenge of working out the budget when we were, so our first draft, we were looking at a 14% increase across the whole. They gave you a heads up. I mean, you knew this months and months ago. This is not, this, it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, wasn't dropped on you, you uh, know, way ahead. It's, it was, we spent the last couple months working on the budget and it's, it's, um, you know, I, I don't say months and months ago that we knew, but as it, Became, um, we never teased us that we might get some money. No, and right. usually they don't. Usually we, we work through the budget and try and get it as tight as we can. And then afterwards, then they say, well, here's the extra bonus. Just to put it in perspective, if it was $70,000 last year, that would be a uh, $200 million house that turned down. That you're not going to get any taxes from. I, it's a one perspective I say, I guess you could say that. So, so that among other issues made it a challenging year to to keep the budget to a modest increase. And with all the department heads uh, scraping and, and cutting and, and putting things off that they wanted to do until later, then we were able to keep it down to, what was the final? Two just, just under two. Just under 2% increase in the, in the tax rate from 14. So, it's, um, yeah, there's things that we cut that we would rather not cut. That, uh, and that's, um, yeah. Martha. Yeah, in fact, I noticed when I was writing the pre-town meeting article or town meeting preview article for this week that the total sum in the budget is a little bit less than you asked for last year, but if you look at it the other way, the amount to raise be, to be raised by tax is a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. 
that's the shift of the library yeah. probably out of it, last, yeah. last year versus this year, you've got to remember the shift of the library. Right. No, it's, um, it's quite a little puzzle to put this budget together and to, to make it all work. It's, um, you know, thanks to all the volunteers that, that kick in and help to do it. Who's going in the door? What kind of question will they have? <laughs> so Tony, you came in a little late, but um, we talked some on the library and the issue of separating the library out from the budget, which is basically for um, no one here is Mary Sue. Yeah. All right. Um, I don't think we would have come in late if the uh, time for this meeting had been set somewhere. Yeah, I saw 6 o'clock and 6.15 and yeah. somebody else said 6.30. So. I got 6.15. I was kind of wondering about that myself. Yeah. It, it was warned at 6 o'clock in the paper. Yeah. Well, 6.15 for the regular one. email morning. said 6.15. Yeah, That's all I'm saying. Well, <laughs> so I'm glad I didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. My brother let me know. Yeah. But it was 6.15, he forwarded it to me, and it, it said 6.15, and it yeah. said pre-town meeting and 6.15. Well, um, We're all here now. We're all here anyway. Yeah. 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 I like to be punctual. Yes. <laughs> so, um, that said, um, anybody else have any comments, questions? Motivational speeches. I mean, we'll have uh, hopefully a larger contingency at the at the full town meeting and 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 have more conversation. Yes, Harlan. Speaking of town meeting, you running? Running away or running for meeting? No. Either or. Uh, I'm going to run again. Yeah. 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 What else is there to do? Yeah. So um, if that's that's it, we'll close the pre-town meeting and open up the regular select board meeting tonight. But, um, you're looking like you're you you just. I just was apologizing because I thought I was only two minutes late. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, don't feel cut off if there's we're not, anything we're not that you want to say. Yeah. yeah. Anybody who wants to talk about something that yeah. they think we've already talked about, speak so, up because yeah. it's and here we are. It, you know, yeah. it was a mistake in communication. Yeah. So I was just, I don't know how much we've covered about the town library being taken out of the uh, yeah, we, we talked about that yeah. um, straight off. And you can, of course, go back and, okay. and look at it. But we can um, <laughs> recap, basically, that the um, we decided to pull it out for just more clarity since it's a big chunk of the budget and make it easier to talk about when aside from being buried in the midst of the other budget you know, just as we had requests at the last town meeting that um, some of the bigger items be pulled out specifically Werva was pulled out as a separate um, item also I was just wondering with that knowledge and the fact that you were trying to make it clearer and the fact that we were trying to show as a town that how much our town library cost to run nowhere in that description did it say how much tax is paid of that amount of money and that that our we our budget is is paid for you know nearly 50 percent by donations and i just thought that would be nice to have that in there too. Oh, by the way, this has been pulled out because we're, they're asking for this much money. Did you know that your town taxes only pay for 50% of your town library? And it just wasn't there, so it didn't seem as clear as it could have been. Because I think as a general knowledge, most people don't know that their town library is only funded 50% by the town taxes. And that's a pretty big piece of information. So if they, if they look through the budget in the library, they should I mean, it maybe yeah, but you know, that's out. two pages of, of yeah, lots numbers. of numbers. Yeah. And because you, we went to the effort or the, the budget, mm -hmm. 
um, committee went to the effort of pulling it out and making sure that people noticed it was 12 percent and people noticed that it was a big hunk of money it would have been nice to also notice that it's only 50 percent of what it costs to run the library and that was just no, no, i just felt point. i felt like maybe a little not as clear as it could have been good thanks for bringing that up Spirit of clearness, maybe we can put that in next time. Yeah, yeah. Or it can be mentioned at town meeting. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. 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 should have a little yeah. spiel ready for the town meeting. We absolutely. Well, Martha could put it right in the paper right now. I'm putting it in right now. Well, and I think also um, the library could have put that in their report. Right. Oh, um, well, we did in our report. It's the, uh, we, uh, what's in the town report is what was sent to us. Kevin? Yeah. Um, well, sort of. Uh, oh, I didn't we send anything. a narrative each year, and then right. we're asked for a financial report. Similar to what and we've done in previous years. financial report that the trustees approved and that was sent in before the deadline yep. is not what was printed in the town report. We right. had made a much easier to read, much right. easier to understand, one page summary of the financials which wasn't printed that a two page we, we felt that that was it simplified things a little little overly much so okay. it printed in the same format yeah. as all the other budgets that are in the book. purposes it just would be nice when the trustees send their financial report that perhaps there's some feedback that We'd like to see a little more detail, rather than just not print what was sent and substitute something. I thought there was some back and forth on that. No, nope. and I think but Lola was made aware of it too. Yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. specifically. Okay. All right, it's yeah. just that I spent an entire day of library time doing this, and if what you want to print is this, it's a waste of you know my day. <laughs> And we'll do a better job of making those um, in our narrative a little clearer. <coughs> right. Always room for improvement. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. We not have that one page summary as a handout at the town yeah, meeting. I think we decided we will. That it's just that uh, I would imagine there's a lot of people in town that can't even read this size of. <laughs> well, it's pretty much it's pretty much the same size as the entire budget. It is. Yeah. <clears throat> Just trying to make it easier. <clears throat> we should have a large print town report. <laughs> <laughs> On special request. Just end up AARP compliant. There so go. are we? Uh, everyone satisfied with the uh, anything that else you'd like to say for the pre-town meeting? We'll. Um, close that and enter into the <coughs> regular select board meeting, which was properly warned. Even Harlan, you're saying you didn't get an email about it? <coughs> no. No. So you got the, the email the email list to shoot them out? Yeah. I, I've got one. I think about this meeting, but I think you want about oh. the, uh, no, I got one about the special, uh, special meeting. Executive so. session. Tomorrow. They're on the. I think they're on the same same no, page. Executive no, no. session. Oh, the executive session. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, does anyone have any additions to the agenda tonight that they would like to add, Bruce? Yeah, I'd like to give you just a quick update on Pierce Hall activities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd like to talk some on the missing select board meeting minutes. Missing minutes? The book. <laughs> Anybody else? Then let's um, we'll start by um, Harlan. Which which missing minutes are you talking about? What for what meeting or, or when? Uh, well, there's a bunch of uh, select board meeting minutes that span, as I understand, a more, you know, like a few years, a book that's gone. And it's, I just kind of like to know, you know, 
what it spans, the time period, what's gone. Do you, you seem to know more about it than I do? Do you know what, what years, what, what you're talking about? What decade? Go ahead, Bruce. Well, when I was doing the road research, I was looking for various records uh, for discontinuances or changes in mileages. And when I couldn't find um, what I thought was complete information in the roads and miscellaneous records book, I went looking for the select board minutes. And there seems to be a period from I can't give you the exact dates, but let's say the late 30s and through maybe the early 40s that uh, that whole book of that period of Selectman's meetings it is not with all the rest of the books. So it could be that it's in the vault someplace that we haven't discovered it or it might have gotten <coughs> taken downstairs with other records for some reason, but right now we you can say it's not with the other select records. Did it accidentally go through the crusher? Did it there the shredder last summer? No. No. Nothing like that would ever happen. Of course not. Anyway, my point is is that if there's no book to prove that Pine Gap Road was thrown up. There's no book to prove that it wasn't. So, and I'd still like to know a little more specifics on this, on the dates on that. I mean, it's only logical. You gotta follow my logic. You gotta admit, it's only logical. Yeah, from from my correspondence with the state AOT, the the map record is clear that that road continued to be on the state highway <coughs> maps, and the offices up there have no correspondence uh, t saying that there was any discontinuance on on that road or any other roads in that early 1940s period. How far back does their, does that go, Bruce? <coughs> They're, you know, keeping track of all that. Well, he said that the <coughs> oldest correspondence they had was, I believe it's 1947. Okay. And that's okay. reflected in our Roads and Miscellaneous Records book. Okay, so that's 1947. You and that's just about that spans just about the period that, yeah, those meeting minutes would be handy. But as I said before, there's no record indicated on the maps that there was any change in that area on that road, whereas the Pine Road, it does indicate a change. How much of a change on the Pine Road? You had a question, Dave? Uh, I was going to say what this bill said, that the state maps probably have some reference to when roads are thrown up because they mark mm -hmm. they they mark them differently when it happens and they have in order for them to change their map they have to have something in their files to say change your map. There has also been yeah, um, a lot of research to the Pine Gap issue for the last year. Um, if there were if if there were attorneys uh, researching during the 1930s and the 1940s and they found anything that pertained to this this lawsuit um, I'm sure they have copies of it so therefore there would be documentation to back up what a well what that an attorney the period found. that's missing it would just be nice to be able to verify that with minutes from the meeting mm -hmm. it's just kind of a real you know kind of a uh, well, we may have secured copies from those books before they went missing, is what I'm saying. I, I don't know that for sure, but I would imagine if an attorney was in here doing some research about it, and they found any information that was pertinent to it during the 30s and the 40s from the minutes, they would have made copies of those pages. So we would have Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't... Uh, 
Well, I, I just I'd like to get that information anyway. I'd like to know what's missing and what period it spans. And I don't think I'm asking too much. Harlan, your records. Were there any Were there any land transfers during that period in that region where there might have been a, a meets and bounds done and something on a survey that says, uh, um, you know, Class Three Road, Class Four Road, as the as 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 one of the boundaries of a piece of property that had been transferred from one person to uh, the road used to be across the river from below my place where the abutment is. Yeah. And the piece of land that the road's on now that goes through my property was sold to them right during that period to the National Forest Service. So National Forest Service owns the road from the bridge of the old bridge abutment past my place to where Pine Gap Road comes in. Okay? That's all National Forest land. That was sold to the National Forest for the purpose of a road. Have you looked at any of their old maps? <coughs> I've looked at my deed with the date on it where it was taken off my chunk of land. And I've spoken with Chris Matrick and we're trying to find out exactly when Bingo Road was built because on my property, because I have a feeling that if there was a meeting which probably would have occurred right during that period when the minutes are missing. If they were going to throw up roads out there, like Bingo Road, they might look around and throw up other roads. Even so, there's like Pine Road, you say? The way things have been screwed up out there with names and stuff, there could have been, that could have been Pine Gap Road for all practical purposes. I mean, the way facts have been construed in this thing, right, you know, or, you know, portrayed. Everything's been screwed up. <clears throat> but I'm to, just saying. To go full circle, we, we will probably pull out the troops and the chipmunks and start looking for this book. Okay. Uh, I'd like to I'd like to hear some more on that at the next meeting. Chris? Yeah, with with your approval, I just assume start in one corner of the ball and go through and look for that book. With your approval. Yeah. Absolutely. I love the help. I second it. Because yeah. I'm interested in that Somebody area. Somebody probably put it back in the wrong place. I mean, I, I would like yeah. to. Nobody's help. trying to push it one way or the other. It is what it is, but let's find out what it is. All right. I agree. Okay. Bruce, Pierce Hall, you had an update on Pierce Hall. Yeah, <clears throat> I just wanted to let you know that uh, Pierce Hall has signed a contract with Russell Construction uh, Services out of Rutland for the construction of the Community Fitness Center, and we hope to start construction next week. <coughs> Did you say Russell, the, Russell Construction? I'm sorry, wasn't taking. Russell Construction oh, Services Rutland. out of Rutland. Okay, thank you. And uh, hopefully we'll have a grand opening in June. So the construction, the, the physical space is is created. Is that correct? Is this the construction of the actual um, the, the equipment? And the yeah, well, it's facility? the convert. It's the conversion of two spaces in the lower level. Mm -hmm. One will become a gym where the treadmills and the Nautilus and all that kind of stuff will be. And the other larger room, which is basically under the stage area, will be for uh, dance instructions, aerobic, zumba, that kind of stuff. <coughs> so there'll be two parts of the total fitness center. All right. And when did you say that would be open, grand opening? Uh, they have an 84-day schedule right now with if everything goes right, <laughs> which it never does. Yeah. Lead time for some of their subcontractors is getting pushed way out, but that's what they're hoping to do in 84 days. But you shouldn't have to walk through snow to get to the grand opening. <laughs> well, you never know. You never know. <laughs> Bruce, do we have any idea what monthly fees will be? Uh, they'll be reasonable. 
we're, wor <laughs> well, we're, we're working on membership levels right now, but we'll have them before we open. Yeah. Yeah, that's really Will there be instructions then? For some of the activity, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So we have the um, minutes from the January 28th meeting. We had to skip a meeting because of a properly warned meeting last one, so it's been kind of a long spell. But these minutes seem good to me as typed up. I move to accept them. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Get those. And that brings us to Joan. Got any um basic minutes from February second as well. Oh, yeah. That, there's another one in there? Yep. Yeah, pull that up. Hold on there. Hold um that Oh yeah, this was just a quick one. Speaking of the budget on February second to uh, approve the um, town budget of one million fifteen thousand $315 for town and highways with $749,315 to be raised by taxes. That's, um, did I move to accept these minutes? No second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Okay, Joan, back to you. Uh, a few miscellaneous things, um, mostly questions for you at this point. Uh, I'm looking ahead towards what grants you might want me to be working on uh, in the next fiscal year including, well, before the next fiscal year starts, um, the VTRANS grants series uh, for Class 2 roads and yeah. structures is in mid-April. And uh, wondering if you have any thoughts about uh, doing any projects. We, of course, have things, you know, sort of <coughs> being stacked up the most, the, the one that's the most shovel-ready, if you want to call it that, is um, the Mount Cushman culvert replacement because we have the engineering drawings for that now. Mm -hmm. um, but looking at the budget, I, I didn't see anything where you had a line item and maybe you do it differently and it's in a different place uh, for the matching part of grants, you know, which is typically anywhere from 10 to 20 percent depending upon, you know, which program we're right. looking at. Um, we already have, a, you know, a matching requirement for the small sidebar project, which is what, 29,005. And I don't have a number yet for a cost estimate for the Cushman Road culvert. Um, I hope to get that next week. But just wondering whether you have any thoughts about whether this is just a year that you want to skip because of budget constraints or if you want to sort of still keep trying to do projects. We're going to kind of tiptoe through that because the budget did really constrain a lot of ambitious right. plans for, um, for working. We really um, overshot the budget on paving last year and really have to um, catch up sure. a little bit. Yeah. So the answer is maybe. Should I just um, sort of bring things to yeah, you? Be, okay. it do, yeah, definitely. We're, maybe we're I'm moving, one. moving quite along on the Mount Cushman project, yeah, so that yeah, might definitely. be the only thing considered. Okay, so I can get back to you with a round number for yeah, what the yeah. match take a look at it. Okay. Barb, you had a question? You uh, to the point of carrying as a line item, your matching grants or whatever they may be, might be, what the town will be responsible for. What I think what both the office and the select board is working on now is having a, a different structure for um, accounting for and preparing for the grant monies that you might be applying for and being sure that we do have an accurate amount of what would be carried forward as an expense to, to <coughs> the town. The problem has been the, the differences between when the grant's been authorized and when it's been implemented and when you finally get your full payment. So it's become a kind of, with all the grants that's been going on right now, which have been wonderful, by the way, um, it's becoming a very complicated picture just right. for straight bookkeeping yeah. in the office. Right. And so they're working with the accountants to set up a system that will help make this um, more current and, and more accurate uh, month to month to month, not just on an annual basis. That would be great because then it will help you plan and think exactly. ahead, that that uh, you know, a year or even more about, you know, what your priorities are, <coughs> and 
what you think the expenses would be, and then which mm -hmm. things you want to be able to do right. sooner rather than later. Very often they do go over the cusp of a year, one year right. to another year, especially when our year starting July 1st. So, um, yeah, it makes it more confusing because different grants have also different terms. So each, but I think each project will have its own entity, kind of like the library. Each project will be set aside to see where everything stands. Right. And the White River Partnership is is soliciting monies towards the um, the wastewater product, the, the stormwater. The stormwater yeah. for that. Yeah, we're supposed yeah. to hear sometime very soon about the second grant. Yes, mm -hmm. which uh, we'll know then. Which when is we're plays into the, the ongoing need of, of working on the sidewalks around town. Right, yeah. which is yeah. a whole. Yeah, that's a whole kind of work. Yeah, can we put that up anymore? Martha, you. I was just going to say, speaking of paving and everything, um, is the, I know last year we were told, or I believe it was brought up in a meeting, that the state was going to be doing some work on Route 100 through town. Oh, and that all. It yeah. could that's really, old. it could really, really use it. It's getting very, very lumpy. No, that's the way. That's on the list. No, we're not even on the list. No. Is there any way the town can fill some of the potholes? <laughs> well, it would be up to the state, and I'm sure they will in due time. But yeah, I've seen them a couple times come through filling them, and, and this and then the this kind of weather, it's, it's <laughs> yeah, really I know, it's so just where does it go? it's, it's just getting really, really. They surveyed that whole thing back in God, well, two or three years ago, four years ago. Yeah, six. What was it? It's fifteen. Yeah, I think yeah, they did. Talking about that, but. They yeah, keep yeah, yeah I, I thought it was Chris a whole review of that last year, the year before, and he yeah. said, no, that's. Oh. That was taken off the list. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. to do on the other That's side of Brandon Gap <laughs> <laughs> next year. Yeah. Um, so I have a couple more items. Did you, um, did you I've been that? researching uh, the EV charging station um, thing, and there there are a lot of questions. I have to do some more research. I'll probably bring them back to you. I mean, the state now has an annual funding round. Round it just started this year funding those things um, and reading some of the paperwork they put out made me realize that I have a lot to learn maybe we have a lot to learn about them because there's all these different models and different levels of charging and they require different utility connections and then they also have requirements for how much space is allocated and you're not allowed to take a use the space that you allocated for handicap parking for an EV station unless you can replace the handicap parking space and we have, we're very constrained, as you know, down at the park and ride, we only have like six spaces. Um, so there are a lot of things I need to find out and then sort of put the question to you about whether, depending on what those constraints are, or whether maybe it'll work great, that would be very nice, but I'm not sure. And so the question is whether there might be other good places in town where you want to put um, that facility. Uh, is a there back. a point person or an advisor that can come visit us? Yeah, I think so. I want to be able to just do my research mm -hmm. first, but yes. We'll have a play date. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'll, I'll let you know when I'm ready to do that and we can schedule right. if you're interested yeah. in doing it. So just so you know, it's more complicated than I realized. Maybe we're the dysfunctional communication facility out here. Is <laughs> <laughs> that thing? Yeah. Okay, so uh, that's just an FYI at this point. Um, uh, the bu bus shelter is another sort of conundrum for me. Um, uh, I'm filing for reimbursement on the cost of the construction of the park and ride. That'll be going in. That's one of the things yep. you'll have to sign. Um, and that wasn't a whole lot of money. Um, and we still have $10,000 in that grant budget which the state has said, yeah, we'll submit what you've done so far and we'll give you an extension. But they're not going to extend it for a whole lot longer. Maybe they'll give us six months because that is an old grant that we really need to close out. And so I'm still wondering, trying to find out whether we can put, um, where we do want to put a bus shelter there and whether it's getting used or would be used. Um, I don't really know how much um, the Stagecoach folks actually stop there. How many people actually go there to catch the stagecoach? And so whether there is actually a need for a bus shelter there, or whether maybe again there's another place in town where it would be more appropriate to have a bus shelter. 
And unfortunately, the person I was dealing with at Stagecoach has left, and they've told me when, whenever it is they hire a new person, we'll be able to work with them again, but they don't have, that, they don't have one yet. Yeah. It's been like six months, so. Anyway, so I, I have a hard time figuring out what to do with that. Bless Shelter. I don't know if anyone has any advice to give me or just <laughs> keep trying. Would it be possible to uh, put that money into Pierce Hall if we made the airport cochere into the bus shelter? Unfortunately, well, <laughs> uh, I was going to say unfortunately, no. Um, um, if it was on Pierce Hall property, you mean, put it there? Well, we, you know, there is that shelter right there, and there is a drive-through, sort of. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I don't know if we had some sort of <coughs> plans to uh, fancify it a little bit uh, that we needed a little bit of money for. Maybe that money could be used in lieu of building a bus shelter from scratch. We'd merely be improving one. Well, state well we couldn't use the grant for that. It's no. for a park and ride. Yeah, it's specifically so, money for, for a park and ride. Could be a so we have to, I mean, it's, I think a shelter there maybe is a separate question about where, idea. where that where yeah. would best but be located. There's probably some historical um, yep. restrictions on Pierce Hall too, aren't there? Yeah. But, um, They've had to do a lot of rework on there to comply with historical requirements. Might be a to, height yeah. problem with yeah. the drive. But anyway, oh, that's, that. this, you know, <laughs> well, well, the shelter is not meant for the bus. The shelter is meant for the people waiting for the bus. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. Right? So, so it's not like you have to drive the bus and, you know, it's through here. Yeah. Well, do we have any historical perspective on what the ridership of this uh, stagecoach stop is at all? I mean, there's a guy driving the vehicle. He must know how many people get on and off there. Yeah, it's a matter of you know, talking to stagecoach and telling us, because, you know, they've expanded their routes in the last year or so. Mm -hmm. And they were all very excited about that last year. Um, and they're so actually doing now a lot of the high schoolers. Through the high schoolers, yeah. Well, that's my right. point. Right, right. Where school are the high schools? The high schoolers to come up at the school out with the school students, and they're a lot safer. Uh, it's already been discussed. Yeah. 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 And denied. Um, there's also a lot of use uh, when Quintown has their meals. On day, when they do their noontime meals, there's a lot of people that ride the stagecoach to get up to Hancock. Well, part of the issue is they, 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 they don't get picked up down there. For, for no, they don't get picked up down there. Yeah. And you can see points. Uh, I think the official stagecoach is Max. Yes. That's where the sign is stagecoach stops so here. Our original discussions when we were talking about doing the park and ride was would you move that location to the park and ride mm -hmm. and they said sure they like the idea. Yep. Yeah. And then, I think if uh, we had a shelter people would like the idea of waiting. They, it's the older yeah. place. Yeah. It is. A, it the, the stagecoach yeah. does <laughs> use the um, in front of the fire station as a, as a turnaround. Turn around. You know, it's, um, it's on the other night doing that. Yeah. Wasn't it determined from the school that the pickup at Max was better yes. because yes. of the access to telephones and yes. so many other things? Yes. And, and the school didn't want it changed. Yeah. Correct. There were there were parents that thought it best that the students wait where they would have access to a landline. Mm -hmm. More people. Mm -hmm. More cars. Yeah. Because it's also because some of them who go to school far away, it's so early that the school is not open. Correct. That's why. Mm -hmm. was, yes. That was the impression I got from the meeting I was at. Okay, so that's kind of a shifting. Right. Well, Patty, Patty, did you say students <laughs> using a landline? Are you sure about? I think they go in and the people work at the school. Do they know what it is? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Show them how to do it. <laughs> There's no dials anymore. <laughs> <laughs> right, they punched the numbers, Dave. <laughs> okay, well, that's that's another thing to be worked out. Yeah. Um, is there anything else I have to do? Um, no. All right, well, thank you. It's always stuff to work on. Um, since we have um, folks from the library here, do we have an opportunity to have an update from the library? Do you have anything that you want to share with us tonight? Um, just it's gearing up.
up for a very busy March. Yes. We have I noticed that on schedule of events. If anybody hasn't gotten their March library schedule, I have some here. All right. Well, um, Thursday, um, a Vermont Humanities Council event. Um, we're talking about John, uh, Congressman John Lewis's autobiography, uh, Walking in the Wind, as well as the Vermont Reads Book of the Year, which is his graphic novel, March. When Saturday morning, we'll be uh, planning your cutting garden with Megan Payne. Um, and we'll be giving away free flower seeds on Thursday, uh, March 7th. Free tech support for all your gadgets. Uh, Jasmine West will be here again. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, we had one un unhelpable person last time, but we were booked solid for two and a half hours. Um, Saturday, March 9th, perennial garden design and a photo tour with yours truly. Um, Sunday, March the 10th, we're kicking off the Feminist Book Club with uh, Joy Worling from the State Department of Libraries um, talking about feminist literature. And on Tuesday the 12th, both the Diabetes Support Group and the White River Valley Players are meeting at the library. On Thursday, March 14th, AARP will be presenting a workshop on uh, identity theft and preventing that. And that evening, the Valley Singers uh, meet at the library. Saturday, March 16th, uh, free tax prep assistance. Free registration is required. We can accommodate up to 12 people. Uh, and then Thursday, March 28th, the History Book Club is reading Isaac Storm. And the following Saturday, we'll have two sessions of yoga and dance for kids uh, 3 to 10. Oh, wonderful. Events. Always a busy month at the library. Oh, wonderful. It seems like it's been really, gets busier and busier and busier. We took a kind of siesta over the, the, the winter <coughs> um, because people don't get out after dark and in the snow, but we're definitely gearing back up. Um, I, mean, I mean, in general, it just seems like the activities there have really been expanding. We had 62, 62 people in the <laughs> library Saturday morning this week. It was a busy place. Good job. <laughs> you didn't know the you. writer's group. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot to mention the writer's group. First, to the first Saturday of every month at 1 o'clock, we have a group uh, averages about six people a month come to that. Have been meeting for a couple of years now, um, working on their individual writing projects. Um, led by um, that Amy Braun leads that group. See, there's plenty to say. <laughs> Great. We also <laughs> have a lot of books there, which uh, oh, yeah. Matt keeps right up to date uh, for, and uh, computers and movies and lots of other good things. Stop in. And she has a lot of people, there's a sign behind the checkout desk of all the people who sponsor specific offers. A lot of people in town do that, too. But a lot of people don't realize that although we spend an average of $10,000 a year on materials, that in my tenure there, in 15 years, there's never been a penny of tax money spent on books or movies or any of the content. That that all comes from donations, either past or present. You should also plug when you get the chance. The fact that people are streaming movies now at home and the canopy system is available. Yes. To, New this year service. is streaming movies with Canopy. Um, canopy is not new Hollywood movies. No, no, they specialize classic. in documentaries, foreign films, <laughs> independent films, and the classics. Okay. But sign up and you can stream them for free at home. Thank you. You're um, we've got no one here to talk about the constable office and the uh, highway crew is out working, but I did learn today that the Western Star is down, mm -hmm. the bad radiator. Yep. And so they're going to try and get that up north to be dealt with as soon as possible. But <coughs> that's what happens. Yeah. Um, the, uh, Terry's not here to update on the utilities, so we're on to the new business, and you had something about the 
auditor's findings regarding disbursements with hotels. Anticipated. Um, right now, they are asking um, for remeasurement of a class four road that we supply the digital file for that survey. And that's something that I haven't been able to do yet. And I need a little uh, instructions on how to download that and get it up to them. The other thing was that I was going to propose to the select board that <clears throat> the first quarter mile of Jones Mountain Road, uh, which is now, the Jones Mountain Road is a class four road, but it's treated that first quarter mile as if it's a class three road. In order to make that change on the record, you've got to go through the whole process uh, you've got to advertise it, you've got to give 30 days notice, you have to have a hearing. So 
that's something that the select board will have to figure out whether it's worth that effort to upgrade that section of road. And this would be done sometime this coming year. If how, you, how long is that, that first quarter of that road? Quarter mile. Quarter mile. Yep. It's generally out to that first house that's there. Correct. Right. Yeah. yeah. Is that plowed? Yes, it sure is. It's plowed up to that house, first house. Mm -hmm. it, it's plowed, it's pitched, it's graveled, it's graded in the summertime. Thank you for your attention on this stuff. I'm sure it'd be a lot easier to do this kind of work in the summer than Yeah, yeah, I'll get those digital files up yeah. to them as soon as I figure out just how to do it. Yeah. Maybe this guy, Russell, can help you. All right. He's coming um, in very soon. That pretty much leaves us just for some bills to dial market. One quick question. Um, I was typing away and somehow missed about the highway mileage certificate that's on here. Did you sign that? It's been that, completed that's, and, that's, and filed. Okay, yeah. thank you. We're just talking about some um, um, future improvements and modifications. Thank you. All right, thank you all for coming, and we'll see you um, um, next week for what time? a big party. <laughs>